This is the 13th, 13th tutorial on how to develop mental and emotional fitness. As noted in earlier tutorials, Dr. Albert Ellis developed a five-step approach to potentially troublesome life events. The goal of this step-by-step -step approach is to help you get into the best possible cognitive and emotional place to make the best possible behavioral and lifestyle choices for yourself and others. I added three steps and letters to this approach. Remember that generating a dysfunctional amount of emotion in response to life events is the underlying cause of so much that goes wrong in people's lives. As just noted, the goal of Dr. Ellis's five-step approach is to generate a more functional amount of emotion or unhappiness, which would then put you in a better emotional place to respond to life events rather than react to them. That's why I added step F for functional unhappiness or functional amount of emotion. Followed by step G, which stands for generate options. When I first started teaching, a very wise person told me to always keep my options open when dealing with students. What irrational thinking and a dysfunctional amount of emotion do is cut off your options. They lock you into reacting instead of responding, reacting in some rutted way, a way that you have many times in the past, regardless of whether it's worked or not. Finally, the end result of doing these steps, well, would hopefully be that you end up healthier, happier, and more hopeful for the future. As noted earlier, Dr. Paul Hawk, an REBT therapist in Davenport, Iowa, and author of many simple but informative books, developed a simple paradigm for people when they find themselves in situations they don't like. He says they have four basic options. First, to problem solve and assert yourself. Second, to tolerate with disturbance. This is what a lot of people do. They put up with behavior they don't like and get all upset about it. Young girls, for example, often put up with a lot of bad behavior from young guys and get upset about it. Third, tolerate without disturbance. Many people don't like everything that happens in situations they find themselves in, but choose to tolerate and not get upset about it because there are many other things they like. Working through the five steps Dr. Ellis developed would be a perfect way to tolerate without disturbance. It would also be a way to put yourself in the best cognitive and emotional place to problem solve and assert. If you instead generate a dysfunctional amount of emotion, you are more likely to react instead of respond. You are less likely to be able to problem solve and assert yourself. If you generate anger, for example, you are more likely to be aggressive rather than assertive. If you generate anxiety, guilt, shame, or depression, you will probably find it hard or difficult to assert yourself. Finally, the final option we all have is to leave. Before taking, talking about the best way to assert yourself, there are some cautions about opting to tolerate someone's bad, someone else's bad behavior. It's important to remember that you get what you tolerate. If you're going to put up with bad behavior, you're likely to get more of it. So it's important to ask yourself, what reason do they have to change their behavior if I keep tolerating what they say and do, with or without disturbance? The best way to assert yourself is with what are called I messages. When people generate anger, they typically resort to what are called you messages. You messages include, but are not limited to, orders, threats, commands, and demands, name calling, ridicule, criticism, and sarcasm. They backfire for many reasons. First, they usually involve pointing a finger at someone else in anger. No one likes a finger pointed at them. Their attention often focuses on the finger being pointed at them rather than anything of value someone might be saying. Second, they are some also sometimes called solution messages because they tell someone else what to do. They attempt to take away from someone their right to choose what they want to do. This often provokes futile power struggles and makes it more likely that someone would seek vengeance in some way instead of cooperating or trying to make amends in some way. For these reasons and others, you messages are often called roadblocks to effective communication. On the other hand, with I messages, if there's any finger pointing, it's likely to be at yourself instead of someone else. The reason is that you're talking about yourself instead of them and simply giving them information. And you leave what they want to do about that information totally up to them. That is, unless you suddenly start to disturb yourself and slip into your old ruts for using you messages. The information you give them simply involves what you dislike, how you feel, and what you want. At the same time you tell someone else what you dislike, it helps to also tell them what you like. And when you tell them how you feel, you do that without making them responsible for how you do. iMessages can also be used to let the other person know that you know how they feel and what they like or dislike and what they want. iMessages can also be used to apologize. 
There are many things you can apologize for without apologizing for what you specifically said or did. Apologizing, apologizing goes a long way toward disarming someone else and making it more likely they'll want to resolve any differences you have with them. At the same time, iMessage is not the best way to assert yourself. They are also a great way to do what REBT therapists call putting your behavior where you want your attitude to be. Carefully chosen words repeated in conversations with someone else can put you in a much better cognitive and emotional place to make the best of a bad situation. Here are some examples of iMessages you could use, for example, to try to get a relationship that has gotten off course back on track. For example, starting with the simple phrase, I don't like, here are some ways we could complete it. I don't like when we argue and fight. I don't like when we yell at each other. I don't like when we can't seem to get along. I don't like that we're not as close as before. I don't like that we can't talk without arguing. I don't like that we don't spend as much time together as before. Please note that we, the pronoun we is used instead of you. It's a way to acknowledge that it takes two to tangle and that you share responsibility for what has transpired. And chances are all these things are something the other person can agree with. They are most likely things they don't like either about the relationship between the two of you. Finding common ground or things you can agree on instead of disagree on can go a long way toward resolving any ongoing conflicts and getting a relationship you still care about back on track. As noted earlier, when you tell someone what you don't like, it helps to also tell them what you like as well. For example, I liked it better, or I like it better when we get along or got along. I liked it better when we, t we talked instead of yelling at each other. I liked it better when we spent more time together. I liked it better when we were closer. Once again, these are probably things they like as well. And s so far, you've only talked about things you probably both agree on. Frustration is a feeling other people can identify with and understand and relate to. It happens when people try to do things and things don't turn out as they'd like or hope they would. Talking about your frustration works much better than talking about your anger. For example, I get frustrated when I try to please you and can't seem to. I get frustrated when I try to make you happy and can't. I get frustrated when I try to get along with you and can't seem to. I get frustrated when I try to talk to you and you won't listen. I get frustrated when I try to explain things and you won't let me. Finally, I get frustrated when I tell you the truth and you won't believe me. Note that the same, at the same time you talk about your frustration, something they can relate to, you also let them know that you want to please them and make them happy, even though technically you can't really do that, and that you do want to get along with them and talk to them, and that there are many times when you tried to explain something and did tell the truth when perhaps they thought you didn't care and weren't. It's human nature to react to anger with anger. On the other hand, it's human nature to react to another sadness with compassion. And it is sad, it is sad, when two people who started out with perfectly good intentions somehow lose their way and end up in a much different place with each other than either of them wanted to or hoped to at the start of their relationship. Nowhere is that more true than when parents and teens end up at each other's throats instead of having the kind of relationship they would both rather have. These are some things you could tell someone else you're sad about. I get sad because we argue and fight so much. I get sad because we can't seem to get along anymore. I get sad because we don't talk like we used to. I get sad because we don't spend as much time together as before. And I get sad because we're not as close as we used to be. It's common for people to think the other person in a conflict doesn't understand how they feel or how they look at things. It's common for one person to tell another, you only care about yourself. There are ways, there are, these are some ways you could let someone know that that's not true, that you do, in fact, fully appreciate and understand how they look at things and how they feel. For example, I know I do things you don't like. I know I do things you get upset about. I know I've said things I probably shouldn't have. I know I've done some things I probably shouldn't have. I know we don't always agree on everything. I know it's not always easy being my parent, my fa mother, father, brother, sister, or friend. I know you often mean well, and I know you just want what's best for me. And I know there's a lot on your mind sometimes. As noted above, there are a lot of things you can apologize for without apologizing for a specific thing you said or did. And the more you apologize, the more you do apologize, the more likely someone is to be receptive to patching things up. For example, I'm sorry we argue and fight so much. I'm sorry we can't seem to get along anymore. I'm sorry we're not as close as we used to be. I'm sorry we don't talk like we used to. I'm sorry if I've said or done some things you don't like or didn't like. I'm sorry if you're upset about something I said or did. I, I wish I could take back some of the things I've said, and I wish I could undo some of the things I've done. And finally, you can tell someone what you want in your relationship with them instead of what you both have now. 
again, it's hard to imagine the other person wouldn't want some of the same kinds of these same kinds of things. These are these are more things you can hopefully both agree on. I just want us to get along. I just want us to stop arguing and fighting. I just want us to stop yelling at each other. I just want us to talk more like we used to. I just want us to spend more time together. I just want us to be closer. I just want us to be happy. Finally, there are some things that most people want to hear from someone else they have a relationship with. Some are uncomfortable with t asking for such things and think they shouldn't have to. However, if you don't ask for what you want, you might never get it. Not because you don't deserve it, and not even because they don't feel these ways, but simply because it's easy for relationships to get off track and for people to forget to say such things or be reluctant to share such things for fear that you won't reciprocate. For example, I just want to hear that you're happy with what I do once in a while. I just want to hear that you're proud of me once in a while. I just want to hear that you're glad we're still together. And I just want to hear that you love me no matter what. One of the best ways to practice using iMessages to assert yourself with others is in a tactful way is to write letters. There are some distinct advantages to writing letters. First, when you talk face to face, it's easy to slip into old, dysfunctional, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral ruts and say things that make matters worse instead of better. With letters, you get a chance to evaluate something after you say it and take it back if you realize it won't help. That's especially true if you're typing one on a computer. When you're talking face to face, once it's out there, you can't take it back. Another plus is that, except for rare occasions, people do read letters, and often more than once. And if you write it in a tactful, conciliatory way, it might even end up being a valuable keepsake for the other person. The point is that you get to make your points without interruptions. And the more times they read what you wrote, the more likely your constructive comments are to have the desired effect. And if they do have the desired effect, it would make any future face-to-face -face meeting easier and more likely to end in a positive way. Finally, the more you practice and rehearse using iMessages, the easier it becomes for you to do so face-to-face, -face, and the more likely you are to use them in the future instead of slipping into your old verbal ruts. Many years ago, Lee Cantor developed a whole series of training seminars and classes for teachers and parents on how to best communicate with students and children. One of the techniques he encouraged people to use was called the broken record technique. The point was, if at first someone else doesn't respond to your iMessage, simply keep repeating it and give it another chance to work. If nothing else, doing this keeps you from slipping back into your old cognitive, emotional, and behavioral ruts. And if you can't make something better, at least don't make it worse. As always, you can read more about this at itsjustanevent.com. And you can read more about it in the book, It's Just an Event, It's Your Choice, How You Want to Feel, by Ray Matthews. That book is available at amazon.com, at www.itsjustanevent.com, and from the publishamerica.com online bookstore.